Hello guys, it's Toby here, the Ecom Business Coach. In this training today, I'm gonna to go through a tool that I use with my clients called the e-commerce business dashboard. This is a reporting tool that helps us measure some of the key performance indicators that you need to review on a regular basis in your e-com store to work out what's working and what's not and to see how you can improve your numbers. I'm sure you've heard the saying before, what you can measure, you can manage. This here will help you measure the right things and I'll go through and show you exactly what you need to be measuring and how often, but it'll then give you an opportunity to measure those right things and then for you to be able to go out and work out what's working, what's not, and then put in strategies to improve your business. Yes, I'm talking numbers again. Yes, I know I'm an accountant, I love numbers, but numbers are really important in your e-com business. You need to be looking at your numbers. When you're looking at your numbers, it drives action. I just did this with a client a couple of weeks ago. We sat down and started working out their numbers. We could suddenly see that one of the numbers was not performing as well as it should be. And instantly, we were sat there working out ways to improve it. Without looking at those numbers, we wouldn't have seen or even looked at that. Now we know it's a problem and we can get in and we can sort it out. So let's get into it and I'll break down exactly what the key things are you need to measure. And I'll show you exactly how I measure them with my clients. When we're talking about a dashboard for your business, it's the same as a dashboard you get on an aeroplane, where the pilot can then look at those key numbers to know whether they've got to make adjustments to the plane to make sure it's flying properly. This dashboard here, when you're looking at your econ business, it shows you where you need to make adjustments to make sure you're flying your business in the right direction. That's why it's really good to have it. And it's really good also as a business owner, you don't want to get bogged down in every number, but you do need a highlight, you do need a a dashboard which kind of gives you a, a, a bird's eye view on what's going on in different areas of your business. It may be that once you look at a specific instrument that's measuring traffic, for example, on your website traffic's gone down, then you, now you can go and do something about it. Then you might have to drill down a bit further and go, okay, well, why is traffic down? Is social media traffic down? Is it Google? What is it? But this here, this dashboard here gives you a high level view so when you're in your cockpit and you're the captain flying your business, you can see whether you're on course or not. And if you're not, then you can investigate it further to find out why not. So let's have a look at the dashboard and I'll go through the key figures that you need to measure so that you can get an understanding of that. And then I'll go through some kind of targets and we've got some numbers in here we can play around with. Now, this dashboard here I've got set up is a weekly one. You can measure these stats uh, daily if you like. It depends on the size of the of your business and the changes that it, that, that are, are relevant. So if it's, if it's daily, daily changes are important, then look at it daily. Here from this point of view in this business here, we're looking at a weekly. Uh, I wouldn't go monthly, it's probably too far. You do wanna be looking at this weekly. But here you can see here, so what we've got down on the left here, we've got the week. So this is the week ending. And then at the top, we've got the KPIs that we're measuring. So the first thing there is website traffic. So obviously website traffic or website visitors is the number of visitors that came to your site. So that week, how many visitors did you get? So if you think about a bricks and mortar store, that's really like how many people walked in the front door. So you wanna know exactly how many people landed on your site each week. Now those stats are often on or most of the time are in your e-commerce store or Google Analytics, but we want to make sure we're getting that number so we know exactly how much traffic's coming to our site that week. Then we can then break that down and go, okay, the next stat you want to look at is bounce rate. So bounce rates then, how much of that traffic bounced straight away? So if you go back to the bricks and mortar example again, if people have walked into your store, how many of them walk straight back out again thinking this is not the store for me or this is not the products that I'm after? So we measure the bounce rate, how many people bounced off. Now an average bounce rate is actually 30%. So that's three in 10 people bounce straight off your site. Again, Google Analytics will, will measure this for you or some of the e-commerce stores software will measure this for you. They measure it more as like how many people leave straight away. That's people who land on your site and leave straight away. And I'm not sure exactly how long the time frame is, but it's like the first few seconds. And that's usually showing that's traffic that wasn't interested in your store. An average is 30%, but 
But what you want to be doing is obviously you want to monitor that on a week by week basis for the site as a whole. But your marketing team should be drilling down and working out the bounce rate on the different pages on the site. So how many are bouncing off the home page? How many bouncing off a category page? How many bouncing off a product page? Because if you can see that people are bouncing off a certain page, it means we might need to do some more work on that page to stop people bouncing away. But bounce rate's really important and you need to measure that on a weekly basis as well to see what's going on. The next thing then is how many people added a product to their cart. So we start talking about conversion here, but we're not just going, okay, how many people placed an order? We want to know how many people added to the cart versus then how many people went to the checkout. And obviously we're, we're measuring abandoned carts in that as well. Uh, and also when we're looking at the website, if we've got the first conversion, which is somebody adding to the cart, it means the product page is set up well, they got the benefits across, the, the navigation has worked, we've got them into the cart, but now it's our checkout process. There's something wrong with our checkout process that we need to look at. But first of all, let's look at how many we're at the cart, and then we do a visitor to cart calculation. So we want to know what percentage of that. Now an average percentage is 10%. So out of every 1,000 visitors, you're going to get 10% of that that are going to jump straight into adding something to the cart. So 100, that's the average. Then the next thing is, okay, how many people then made a purchase? So they went to checkout, they placed the order, and then you got visitors to purchase conversion, and that's usually 5%. So an average for a website is 5%. So that means for every 100 people that come to your site, five of them will buy something on average. So again, these averages I'm giving you here are e-commerce stores overall. Now, some e-commerce stores are going to be very different than others. So it is important then that you measure your own and compare yourself to your own averages to see whether you're improving or not. But that's something you need to measure, that conversion rate. So we now know we've got the conversion rate there, and we're looking at abandoned carts. So you can see here, abandoned carts, the average abandoned carts is 50%. So half the people who put something in their cart don't come and buy. So you can see here though, by measuring this, you can start looking at them ways of improving it. Because if you make improvement in any of these stats, it's obviously, obviously gonna increase your sales and increase your performance. But yeah, so abandoned cards, 50%. Then here, we then measure your sales. So for this client, their target is $100,000 a week. That's what they wanna aim for. Average transaction value, so on average, how much somebody spends with you. And again, these are all stats that will help massively improve things. And then the last thing we look at on a regular basis is your 12-month average repeat sales. So how often are customers buying off you in a 12-month period? This is a, obviously a really important stat that if you improve, will help you obviously massively improve sales, which all these stats do. Like this is, and this is the top line of what you want to measure. Now, if we look at some of the numbers in here that we started to measure, so you can see here, we've now actually been able to reverse engineer this so we know exactly how many website visitors we need to get to our target sales of 100K. So we know we need, we need 100K divided by the 6666 gives us our number of transactions we need, 1,500. We know that's 5% uh, of people adding to, uh, or, or to traffic then we know the traffic needs to be 30,000. So we know that we need to get 30,000 um, people to our store each week for us to meet our target. So we can start there. And then you can look here, week by week, we've got 31,000, 28,000, 31,000. So yeah, we're not far off the target. We beat the target first week, bit under the next first week, next week, a bit over. Week after that, we've done 51. So you want to know what happened that week. That for these guys, it was an email blast. So an email blast went out, drove loads more traffic to the site. Uh, and this is why email marketing can help drive sales. But again, you need to measure it. And then they did 31. But you can see here, something's happened the last couple of weeks here where they've dropped down to 25,000 and 25,000. So that's where you want to start doing something about it. So when you look at this on a weekly basis, that's where you want to jump onto your marketing team or your digital agencies or your consultants that you're using. Or if it's you, you jumping on your site and seeing, okay, why is the traffic dropped down? Is there anything that has changed? Has anything changed with our ad campaigns? Has anything changed with the website? What's going on? You can jump on it very quickly. 
bounce rate for these guys is, is quite a bit lower than the target, which is great. So the target's 30%. They seem to be around 25, 24%. So that's, that's pretty good. And again, you want to break that down. So you want to see, and you get your marketing team again to break that down and see where the bounce rates are in different pages on the site. Uh, now you can see here, their add to cart. Our target's 3,000. We've got 3,001, 25, 27. That big week where we had the email blasts, we've got 6,250. Very happy that week. So you can see here, and again, we've got the problem the last two weeks. Drop down. We look at that as a percentage, 10% is the target. We got, uh, we got, we're just trending underneath that, 9.7, 9.1, 8 8.7. We had two great, the 12.2 and the 10.4, two great weeks there. If we scroll down to the bottom, it will give us the average. The average is 10.1, which is bang on the target. So that's pretty good to know. But you can see here, again, I'd just be concerned. I mean, you might be able to improve it slightly, but conversion rate is pretty much on track. Or well, conversion rate to add to cart. Then you get your purchases. So our purchases for these guys, our target's 1,500 purchases. So we need to do 1,500 orders a week to get to our target. Uh, but you can see here, again, orders are massive the week we send the email blast out. Uh, and they've dropped down those last two weeks. Look, and the conversion rate has dropped down a bit as well. So we've got a problem in the last two weeks where our traffic's gone down and the conversion's gone down. So we need to be working on that pretty quickly. This is the beauty as well of you measuring these numbers. What I found is most e-com businesses don't really measure their numbers like this. They rely on their marketing consultants or agencies to give them reports and they think everything's okay. Or they might just jump on the site now and again and look at how we're doing today, but they're not looking at the trends or they're too reliant on third parties. Because the issue is, is what happens is when you start measuring it each week, and I've seen this with many clients, you then start going back to your agency or consultants or your marketing team and going, what's going on here? And then they suddenly realize now, oh shit, this client's keeping me accountable. I'm going to have to jump on this and sort this out and have a look at it. And it makes up the level of service you get from them or it ups your game to get it sorted out. So, and that's what happens when you look at numbers. It's the same for my business. It's the same for every business I've ever worked with. When you start looking at the numbers, that helps you drive the decisions. So that's why it's really important to do this. And look at that dashboard. But that dashboard is starting to warn you. Something's happened the last couple of weeks. It's dropped down. So the conversion rate, if we look at the bottom, let's look at the conversion rate as a whole. It's 5.3. So it's not too bad. Again, it's just over target. But again, just worried about the last couple of weeks. And there's no reason why we can't ebb to try and get it up higher. Okay, then we've got abandoned carts, which is really add to cart, less the uh, purchases. So abandoned cart percentage is 50% is an average. Again, this is an average, not necessarily your business. You can see here they're running at 41, 41, 38, 54, went up a bit there. I think it was the, uh, that was the uh, big week. Uh, 47, 48, 53. So it's not far off the 50. Let's have a look at the bottom, see where that is. 47.6. It's not that far off, but again, you need to make sure you've got strategies in place, managing your abandoned car, you've got flows in place to keep, to get people back who have abandoned their car where you can. Uh, obviously, abandoned carts, average on a website is 50%, so it's always quite high. It's quite often related to shipping, so it really depends. You've got to get your strategy right for shipping. So then you've got sales, so these guys here, you can see each week, 113, beat the target, 97, just under, 107, 184 in that big week. Woo, happy days. 110, so we're all happy into these last two weeks. So you can now see revenues down. What tends to happen is like, we can see the last two weeks things have dipped. What tends to happen is most business owners don't look at it this regularly. So they might get to the end of the month and go, oh, it's a bit quiet this month, by which time they can't do anything about it you're looking at it each week, it gives you the chance to jump on it straight away to fix it. I've had clients where they've experienced really good growth and they're in a, a, in a, a rapid growth situation. Uh, but because we're monitoring the target these quite closely, we can see when that growth starts to dip a little bit and we jump straight on to the marketing team and the agencies and push them. Now they come back often and say, well, look, what are you talking about? You get massive growth. You, 
Yes, we are, but we can see a trend where that growth is dipping. And so we're missing out on something, so we need to push a bit harder. But that's what happens when you can look at it each week. Rather than wait until the end of the month, the end of the quarter, the end of the year, when most people look at their numbers and go, oh, what happened there? There's nothing you can do about it then. It's history. Here we can do something about it before the end of February, for example, to improve the situation. Their average transaction value, their target is $66.66. And you can see they're tracking just under it. So there's some work they can do on that to try and improve that. But again, they need to look at strategies for doing that. And then the last number they're measuring there is the average repeat sales. Some uh, e-commerce websites give you this number, but it's often not calculated in a very good way. Uh, I don't have time necessarily to go in here to show you how I calculate it, but there's, there's a worksheet on this sheet which I use to do that. But you can see these guys, uh, they're improving. They've gone from 2.5, 2.6, 2.7. They got up to 2.7. Obviously, the more repeat sales we can get, the better. If you think about your e-com business, when you, what you pay when you get a customer in, you have to pay the ad cost for, to get them in. It's expensive to get a new customer. But once you've got them, any repeat sales, the profit's all yours. So the more repeat sales we can get from them, the better, obviously. So you can see here, this is what we do from a headline point of view to measure the performance of the website overall. Now, this isn't measuring specific campaigns. We have a different way of doing that. Uh, and we have different spreadsheets to manage those as well. So that's your ad, Google Ads campaigns or your meta and social media campaigns. Uh, but this here gives you an overview of your website on a week by week basis to see how it's performing. Now, if you've got any questions about that, please write a comment below and I'll check that out. If you want any help, give me a shout. There's a link in the description below where you can book a call with me and I'm happy to have a look at that with you. And if you like this content, subscribe to the channel and check out some of the other training. I've got some other training on, on recently that I did on how to analyze your numbers on your Google Ads campaign. So make sure you check that out because that kind of fits hand in hand with this one too. All right, I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers, guys.